You might want to get out your pens and papers to take notes or your iPad, whatever you kids are doing these days. Because now that the Trump administration's tax cuts are about to become the new reality, it's game on for both individuals and businesses to immediately try and figure out how to beat the new system or at least improve it, including what to pay off before January 1st rolls around. So we thought, let's bring in a tax expert who understands both of these things. Joseph Perry, leader of Markham Tax and Business Services. And we also have a Trump voter and a Republican and a GOP strategist, Ned Ryan. So Ned, you're going to wait Hello. because I want to hear what you think can be done ahead of a tax reform plan that you're not totally in love with. But hold that. Joseph, first to you. Uh, I have to tell you, be honest, uh, you've been snooping around trying to find loopholes already? Uh, everybody is. Uh, it's amazing because now with media and information being instantaneous, everybody's asking questions. So we're getting many of our clients calling us. Uh, so obviously good accounts are looking for loopholes. Uh, one that I think has now confused people is the fact that many accountants, including us, were saying that you should prepay your 2018 state income taxes. And uh, lo and behold, what you find in the law, they must have heard about it too. Uh, they took that loophole away. So you cannot prepay your 2018 state income taxes. However, you can pay your 2017 income taxes. Uh, state taxes, and, and you want to ensure you do that, especially if you're not in the alternative minimum tax. That's one of the few times you have that. Uh, the more you pay this year, especially if you're going to fill up 2018 with the $10,000 deduction, you're better off prepaying it this year. Second, what you may want to do is prepay your real estate taxes. Many jurisdictions are actually trying to figure out a way to collect the taxes, I guess, so that way they could help uh, with uh, collecting money quicker. Okay, wait, 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 uh, hold on. Let me clarify. Your real estate taxes from 2017 or 20, you can't do the 2018 you, beyond You can 10, do the 2018 provided they're willing to take the money. And it, 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 it is uh, effectively okay to do. That's the confusion. People are confusing state income taxes for 18 they are, yeah. with real estate taxes for 18. You can prepay as long as it's assessed and the town is willing to collect it. That's, uh, so that, that's one of the few loopholes you'll have this year versus next year. Ned, uh, I want to bring you in here. Uh, you had written a piece for The Hill that we had you on yeah. about because it systematically filleted this whole thing. You did not <laughs> like it. You were, you were slashing and burning like uh, Pauline at La Maison du Caviar in Paris where she slices the salmon up in very thin pieces. And, and does it say anything to you that already tax experts are trying to figure out ways to game it? Well, no, I mean, you're right, Liz. I, I still have my concerns and I feel that it cheated towards the corporate guys. I really wanted an effective rate of 25% for the small business guys. And so when you get to a 29.6 effective rate, hey, it's a step in the right direction, Liz. It just didn't go far enough. And I also think, too, I, I still have question marks. If an average family making 73000 is getting 2000 back annually, A, great that they're getting their money back because let's not forget all this money that's coming back was theirs to begin with amen but that's only forty two dollars a week and i'm not really sure that that's a life-changing experience this all to say liz i really think this plan it, let's call it a solid double could have been a home run if they had done it a little bit better for small business if they'd done a little bit better for some of the more middle class okay. and upper middle class that all to say, I'm still perplexed as to what Democrats are going to run on. They're feeling like they've got an opportunity to run against this in 2018, but what are they going to do when you see multiple quarters at 4% GDP, you see a stock market that goes to 26, maybe even 27,000, and you actually do see some jobs added and right. wages go up? I, mean, how, how I just go back to the fact, Liz, I think a small business rate at 25% would have had a much more immediate impact on the middle class in regards to new jobs and wage increases. And so mm -hmm. I hope that they'll go back to that. Same time, Liz, okay. but I think they need to go back and address some of these loopholes, the carried interest loophole being one of them. And, for the and I actually and think for, Trump hold, hold can go do second. that and have I, Mnuchin actually go to the IRS and ask for a new opinion. What does this actually mean? And you know what? I think that they could actually get this done outside of Congress. So I'd encourage Trump to go ahead and do that on the carried interest loophole. Joseph, uh, also the, the corporations, already many of them are saying, you know what? We're going to give bonuses. Some, like FedEx, say, we'll wait. 
But when we see it add to GDP, we're in. We will start uh, giving bonuses and raising uh, wages, et cetera. But the corporations, what about the corporations, you as a tax guy, that used to pay less than 20%? I'm thinking of General Motors, who actually got a tax credit a couple of years ago, even though it made $4 billion. And uh, there are many companies that gamed it so well, they paid under 20%. Yeah, well, it, there's a misnomer about the effective rate. First of all, what you have to think about relative to the effective rate is the fact that um, you start at 35. If you have foreign income, you're not being taxed on that, so that's going to lower your effective rate. Now, with the repatriation and going to a territorial tax to some degree, that money is going to come back. You know, I've asked some of our clients, what are they going to do? And many of our clients are really giving me better news than I thought. Good. One of my clients that had a lot of money offshore actually said, Joe, there's no place better to invest in the United States. Even though I have operations abroad, I'm bringing money back here. And I'm going to mm -hmm. read. My plan is changing in the next five or 10 okay. years. And that's terrific. As we finish up, Ned, tell me, have you spoken to the president? Have you spoken to the White House team about your thoughts? Oh, I expressed some thoughts earlier this week. I was actually in the White House and said, don't oversell this plan. Listen, it's a step in the right direction. This is the thing, Liz. I, it's a step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Never going to complain about tax cuts. And let's face it, even though I didn't think the small business rate went far enough, it's the lowest it's been since the 1930s. Indeed. Step in the right direction. At the okay. same time, don't oversell this. Be realistic about what it is. Corporate got favored. There will be benefits for small business and the middle class at the same time. I don't think it's as earth-shattering as some would like right. it to be. At the same time, I think there's going to be some benefits along the way for the middle and upper middle class, maybe just not as much as people would like to say right now. Let's give it some time. Ned Ryan, Joseph right. Perry, happy holidays.